I thought I knew Italian food, and then I came to Sicily. Sure, you can find your pizzas and carbonara pastas, but you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not exploring Sicily's unique regional offerings. Sicily is a crossroads of civilization. Greek, Arab, Norman, and a handful of other civilizations all played a part in conquering this island, thus shaping not only Sicily's history, but also its food. Over the past few weeks, we shared our experience traveling around Sicily and living with my family here. And if there's anything we'll learn, is that Sicilians are serious about food. Aided by some of the most fertile volcanic soil in the world and surrounded by water, Sicilian food is a love affair between the land and the sea. From bustling markets to family-run trattorias, we'll be sharing 12 dishes from around Sicily and where to find them. And our journey starts in Agrigento, where my family spent some time showing us the best of the best cuisine in this area. But before we head to our first spot, let's learn about the main players in Sicilian cuisine. As you can imagine, with such fertile Italian, local ingredients make up the majority of the dishes. The Sicilian approach often involves incorporating the rich Mediterranean flavors like tomatoes, capers, olives, and their oil, and a generous use of herbs and spices, including saffron and cinnamon, showcasing the island's Arab and North African influences. You can also expect to see plenty of citrus fruits, almonds, pistachios, and ricotta and pecorino cheeses. Oh, and one other important thing, lots and lots of seafood. First things first, of course we choose an appetizer, and this is the most Sicilian appetizer. And this might be our only chance to have some vegetables during this food tour because it's a pretty carb-packed um, food tour. That's true. So, uh, That's how do we say uh, provecho, buon appetito? In buon appetito. Buon appetito. Now, caponata is a riot of textures and tastes. The main character is a fried eggplant, supplemented with crunchy celery, briny capers, and olives, all swimming in a tangy tomato sauce. Whoa. Wow, this is a really interesting texture, especially with those almonds on top. And it almost has kind of like a sweet and sour taste. This is something that we don't have in Mexico. Sport fish is a kind of fish that needs the cold waters of the Mediterranean. So if you're coming over here to Sicily, really, really high there, you, you need to have this, this fish. And we ordered, in the menu there were so many kinds, but we ordered it. Pecha Spata a la Siciliana, that means the Sicilian way. In Pecha Spata a la Siciliana, the swordfish is typically sliced into steaks and then grilled or pan fried to perfection. The magic of this dish lies in its accompanying sauce or dressing. It's a lively mix of fresh tomatoes, capers for a salty briny kick, and olives, adding a rich earthy depth. Aromatic garlic and a generous sprinkle of fresh herb like oregano and parsley are also thrown in the mix, as well as a splash of lemon juice or white wine to add a bright acidic balance. All these elements come together harmoniously, coating the swordfish with a medley of flavors that are tangy, sweet, and savory. Ooh. You need to try it, Juliana. It's very, very good. Yeah? Hey, I think now would be a great time to show us how you say something very, very good in, in Sicily. That's right. Whenever you really like something in Sicily, the Sicilians do this. It means that it was very good. Now, who's ready for dessert? Or should I say, dessert for breakfast? I very much appreciate the fact that they do not look down upon having gelato for breakfast. Uh, what a wonderful country this place is. So we ordered this delicious invention called brioche con gelato. Think of it as probably the best ice cream sandwich you'll ever have. Of course, you choose whatever gelato you want. We got this delicious brioche bread around it. and. It, I swear, I'm not just eating this because it's socially acceptable. People actually do eat this for breakfast here. So uh, let's give it a try. Mm. Oh, the gelato obviously on its own stands out. It's incredible. I could eat gallons of this, but with the bread, that soft, like fresh made bread, probably made here today. It's just the most magnificent invention I've ever had. <laughs> Now we have a casata, casata siciliana. This is the main dessert over here in the island. There's many desserts, but this one is the main one. And it's very, very sweet. Normally it's, it's huge and you have to share it, but this one is an individual presentation. So I will not willing to share, Juliana. Sorry about that. <laughs> now we gotta try this one. Looking forward, looking forward to this. Casata features a moist sponge cake soaked in fruit juices or liqueurs, layered with a sweet creamy filling of ricotta cheese, enriched with candied peel and chocolate chips. This confection is encased in a vibrant marzipan shell and topped with a smooth glossy royal icing. Whoa, tastes like Sicily? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 
especially with the pistachios on top. Our next dish we are searching for, pane con la milza. And we're taken by Martin's cousin Enrico to the best spot in town. La antica paninaria. Pane con la milza is not for the faint of heart or stomach. This is a sandwich that stares you down and dares you to take a bite. It's the kind of food that makes you question your life choices. Right before you realize you've made the best one yet. So what's in this bad boy? Picture this soft, fluffy bread, innocently sitting there, about to get a wake-up call. Then comes the milza, which is spleen and lung, cooked until tender, often in lard. Yeah, you heard that right, spleen and lung. This meaty, rich filling is seasoned with salt, maybe a little bit of lemon, and some cheese. Now I know that if I would have looked at what the description of this was before, I would have been too nervous to eat it. Martin swears to me it's good, and he's never led me astray before. I am a notorious picky eater, but we're in Sicily. Let's give it a try. Oh. Oh my God. This meat melts in your mouth. You barely even need to chew it. The only thing I'm chewing right now is the bread. It's so soft, so juicy. I get it now, Martin. I get it now. <laughs> the first time I visited over here, I think it was 2005. I came with my entire family. And my family from here, they brought us over here to this exact place. And I remember I didn't want to try it. But then I tried it, I fell in love. It was love at first sight. <laughs> There's one more restaurant for us before we continue to our next stop. And that's to La Paneteria e Rosticheria to meet up with my friend Alessandro. We came to try Arancine, which we'll get to later. But he tells us we really ought to try something more local instead, a pastry called La Mignolata. And this one has mortadella and also olives. So I'm gonna like this one. La, il nome lo dice, lo dice la parola stessa perché il, il fiore del, dell'oliva si chiama mignola e se tu noti anche il, la forma mm -hmm. eh, ricorda un pochettino quella di un fiore che sboccia e diciamo la mignolata è famosa da Grigento per questo motivo ed è molto 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 più buona anche dell'arancina perché tutti conoscono e tutti conoscete le arancine ma la cosa più, più buona è che ogni, ogni città, ogni paese che c'è in Sicilia ci sono sempre delle piccole specialità che voi dovete sempre provare. L'arancina ormai è molto internazionale, la conoscono tutti. Voi dovete, quando andate in giro per, per la Sicilia, dovete sempre chiedere qual è il pezzo tipico che c'è qua eh, nella vostra città e loro vi daranno poi i pezzi tipici. Look on the top. <laughs> so good. In the inside, it's very, very soft. And the cheese and the olives, it's so good. I'm loving it. And now it's time to talk about the one dish that everyone can't stop talking about. Arancini. This Sicilian staple has traveled the globe, as Alessandro keenly observed. Even our cozy Italian eatery back home has joined the bandwagon, serving their own spin on this iconic dish. But here's the thing. Arancini is more than just a tasty snack. It wouldn't have existed without the various conquerors from the island. Martin's aunt, who moved to the island over three decades ago, took a moment to explain this dish further to us. Sicilians love food, so arancina is because when Arabs arrived here, introduced from China, rice and oranges, citrus. So arancina is um, rice boiled in saffron, uh, compact like orange is why the name arancina <laughs> means orange, orange. And the interior is whatever you find in your fridge. See, in this case, is ragu, ragu with tomato sauce. Tomatoes are from Mexico, and the meat is obviously is different. But um, sometimes we can use with fish and eggplant fry it, or we eat ham and cheese and and meat. Instead, of your sandwiches in the United States. For when we see TV, we eat the delicious arancina for wherever. It could be hot, it could be cold. Delicious. And I know Martin wants to eat it for as many meals as possible, right? So far, only four. <laughs> we gotta eat that number up. Also, it's a weird thing because it's arancina in the west of Sicily and it's arancino in the east of Sicily. So you will find arancine or arancini depends on where you ask it. If it's ne next to Catania, it's masculine. And if it's next to Palermo or to the west part, it will be uh, feminine. 
This is a star of the show. This is my favorite of all season. You're gonna love this dish if you love fried food. Um, specifically looking at those who are like me and love like those fried macaroni and cheese balls. It's hard to explain, but the texture is somewhat similar to this one that we have right here. I mean, tons of cheese, ham, crunchy fried outside with rice inside. It's just the most magnificent invention I've ever had. And uh, I'm going to try and fail probably at home to recreate this, but <laughs> let's give this a try. We're in Sicily. We're eating it for practically every meal here. Mm. Yep. So good. Oh my god. Alessandro's place is certainly tasty, but we wanted to know his opinion on where the best arancini can be found. Secondo te, dove si trova la migliore arancina di tutta la Sicilia? La migliore arancina di tutta la Sicilia? Beh, considera che Palermo è la patria delle, delle arancine. Ok. Sì, però se io ti devo dare una mia opinione, l'arancina più buona in assoluto, io l'ho mangiata nel traghetto, nella piccola nave che fa Messina, Reggio Calabria. C'è una nave, ci sono i traghetti che collegano lì, lo stivale, l'Italia, sì. con la Sicilia. So if you find yourself on that boat, let us know how the arancina is. Agrigento has treated us well on this food journey and we were able to find a lot of our dishes so far. But it's time to head east. Next up on our list of things to try in Sicilia, has taken us to a little town called Taormina, which you guys may know from the popular show, White Lotus. This is a cannoli. Sure, you may know a cannoli, you've heard of it before, they're all over the world, but you haven't had a real cannoli if you haven't had one here in Sicily. This shop that we went to here in Taormina has all different sizes, all different flavors. This is the perfect way to start your day here in Sicily. To make it simple, a cannoli is a classic Sicilian sweet treat crunchy fried shell filled with smooth sweet ricotta. There's a lot, there's pistachio, there's another one, but get the original one with ricotta, the Sicilian way. Whoa, that filling, that's what gets me. And the outside, so crunchy, <laughs> so, so delicious. Our journey continues 45 minutes south to Sicily's second largest city, Catania. And we have one extra special dish we're looking for here. In case you want to try just a regular pasta dish that includes eggplant and ricotta, you want to try this. You can find it almost in every restaurant in Sicily, but it was born in Catania, and they're very proud of that. This restaurant is called La Pentolancia, so we're gonna try this great dish. At its base, you have perfectly cooked pasta, usually macaroni-like shapes that hold sauce well. Then comes the star of the show, fried eggplant. These golden tender slices bring a meaty texture and a deep, almost sweet flavor that's unmistakably Mediterranean. The pasta and eggplant are lovingly coated in rich, vibrant tomato sauce. But what really sets pasta alla norma apart is the finishing touch, ricotta salata. This isn't your regular creamy ricotta. Ricotta salata is the cheese's sophisticated cousin. It's been pressed, salted, and aged until it's crumbly and delightfully salty. So good. We're discovering that eggplant it's something that you can find in several, several dishes over here. They make it so good. I never thought I liked it that much. The eggplant melts in your mouth. It's so good. And with the ricotta, it's salty, but it's very nice. And at last, we make our way to Sicily's largest city, Palermo. There's two dishes we're on the hunt for now, Svencione and Panele, both street food offerings that are best found in Mercado del Capo. A small stall called Stanlio e Olio has them both. We're about to try Panele. That is chickpea fritters. So with the influence of the Arabs, they also bring the chickpea. And it's very famous over here. You can eat it like that, or you can eat it also in a sandwich that they call it panino di panelle. Uh, so we're gonna try it. It's gonna be good. Greasy, simple, with a lot of flavor. It's for me. Now in this point in the video, you're wondering how we've made it this far in Sicily without showing you any pizza. Well, pizza's Italian, but you know it's Sicilian? Sfinzione. It's their take on pizza. Check it out. Super thick, bread-like piece. Tons of uh, ricotta on top of this one. There's tons of different types you can get, just like pizza. You can grab this any time of day. Super quick, easy, good street food. The Sicilian interpretation of pizza. 
Domino's pan pizza could never. <laughs> and no trip to Sicily is complete without one of the most famous desserts. Granita. We have shown a couple of desserts in Sicily, but this one is people's favorite during the summer. Why? Because it's very hot. Yes, there's all sorts of flavors, and I got orange, you got? Uh, lemon, but this is the typical one. Yeah. But then, as Juliana said, there's a couple of flavors. And so cheers to the end of our food guide. <laughs> sure, you might hear tourists or your friends back home call it Italian ice or a slushy, but let's set the record straight. It's Granita with a capital G. Granita is like the cool cousin of Sorbet, the one who wears sunglasses indoors and somehow gets away with it. It's a semi-frozen dessert, but calling it semi-frozen is like saying the Sistine Chapel has a nice ceiling. Granita is an art form, a perfect balance of iciness and flavor. It's made with water, sugar, and fresh local ingredients. Think sun-ripened lemons, juicy strawberries, or even almonds. And here's the kicker. In Sicily, they often pair it with a brioche. Yep, bread with your ice. But today, we decide to stick with just the granita. Yours is better. Uh, really? See, everybody goes for the lemon, but I think the real hidden gem in Italy is their oranges. Or mandarin. Or mandarin, that's also been pretty good. So that's 12 dishes you have to try when you visit Sicily. What one would you try? Don't forget, this is just one video of our series around Sicily, so we left this one for you to watch next. So long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye. Ooh.